welcome to this second lecture on trigonometric functions. In the first lecture, we had introduced the background of uh, uh, trigonometric functions, all that you had studied in grade 10. We introduced two trigonometric functions, sin and cosine of x, and we had started discussing some of its properties. So, we will continue with that in this lecture. So, we would like to answer the next question, which is for what x is cosine of x equal to 0. If you recall, we had a unit circle whose center was O and let us consider this point P on the unit circle having coordinates A and B. So, the length of this segment line segment O A, so this point is A here is A and this is of length B and we know that cos of this angle of rotation, the cosine of that angle of rotation is A. So, what we are if we are trying to find out angle x such that cos of x is equal to 0 since cos of x is equal to the x coordinate of that point, what we are essentially looking for is those angles of rotation for which the x coordinate of the final point after the rotation is equal to 0. So, on this circle there are two points for which the x coordinate is equal to 0. So, one is this point here. So, this is the x axis and this is the y axis. So, at this point the x coordinate is 0 and then the other point is this point which is 0 minus 1. So, these are the two points where the x coordinate is 0. Now, this point here corresponds to an angle of rotation. So, we start if we start with this ray here, then we reach this ray here reaches here. If we rotate it by a quarter of a revolution, which is 90 degrees or pi by 2 radians. So, therefore, one solution is that x is equal to pi by 2 radians and the other solution is when you reach this point. So, this point corresponds to 3 quarters of a revolution and 3 quarters of a revolution is 3 pi by 2 radians. So, that is the other solution and as we have seen both sin and cosine of x they repeat uh, their values after every integer multiple of 2 pi. So, cos of x is the same as cos of cos of x is the same as cos of x plus k times 2 pi. So, therefore, the solution to this equation cos x equal to 0 is when x is equal to n plus half times pi, where n is integer. Let us try to find out the sin and cosine of some angles that we come across often. Let us focus on this right angle triangle here A B C, where this angle is 90 degrees and this angle is theta. 
of course, this third angle then is pi by 2 minus theta. So, what we will see here is that cos of theta is equal to the length of the segment a b by a c and sin of pi by 2 minus theta is equal to. Now, we are trying to look at the other angle which is this angle pi by 2 minus theta. Now, the sign from the definition of sign of an angle, the sign of this angle will be equal to the opposite of this angle. So, the opposite of this angle is this side a b divided by the hypotenuse which is a c. So, what we see here is that these two ratios are the same and therefore, cos of theta is equal to sin of pi by 2 minus theta. So, therefore, if you know the sign of any angle, you can also know the if you know the sign of each and every angle, you can know the cosine of each and every angle. So, essentially, the essentially they are one and the same, and this is the relation between them. Now, let us try to find the cos and sine for some uh, commonly. Uh, some angles which we come across commonly. So, let us think of uh, this isosceles right triangle triangle A B C, where this is 90 degrees and this is an isosceles right angle triangle. Therefore, A B is equal to B C is equal to 1 unit and because it is isosceles that is this side and this side are of equal length this angle and this angle will be also equal and therefore, both of them will be 45 degrees each which is both of them will be pi by 4 radians. And by the Pythagoras theorem the length of this hypotenuse will be square root of a b square plus b c square which is equal to square root of 2 units and therefore, cos of this angle pi by 4 will be equal to adjacent divided by hypotenuse which is 1 divided by square root of 2 and in a similar manner sin of pi by 4 will be equal to opposite divided by hypotenuse which will also be the same so when the angle is equal to pi by 4 or 45 degrees both cosine and sine of that angle are one and the same and they are equal to 1 upon square root of 2 let us take another little example where we would like to find out the sin and cosine of pi by 6 radians which is 30 degrees. So, we have a triangle right angle triangle here A B C where this angle is pi by 6 radians or 30 degrees and we would like to find the sin and cosine. Let us extend this line C B, the straight line C B like this and let us make another angle here which is equal to minus pi by 6. So, we construct this another ray here such that this angle is the magnitude of this angle is also pi by 6. 
Now, this ray and this straight line are going to intersect at this point, let us call it D. And now, we focus on this triangle A C D. But before that, what we see is that if we if we just uh, look at these two triangles A B C is one of the triangles and the other triangle is A D B. So, this triangle and we realize that both these triangles are congruent, because they have a common side A B and this angle is 90 and because this line C D is a straight line, this angle is also 90 and then of course, by construction this and this angle, this angle and this angle are also equal. And therefore, triangle A B C and triangle A B D. So, triangle A B C and triangle A B D are congruent or exactly the same. And therefore, the length of the sides are also equal. So, suppose if this A C is equal to 1 unit, then A D is also 1 unit, because these two triangles are congruent. Further, let us focus on the bigger triangle A D C. So, I am now I am talking of this triangle A D C, this particular triangle. We see that by the congruency of these two triangles, this angle and this angle have to be equal. So, if, if the measure of this angle is theta, then this angle is also theta. And this total angle here is pi by 3 or 60 degrees. So, what we see now is that if you look at this triangle A D C, it is an isosceles triangle to start with, because this angle and this angle are equal. And therefore, since the sum of all the internal angles of a triangle is 180 degree, this 60 degrees which is pi by 3 plus theta plus theta. So, pi by 3 plus theta plus theta has to be pi radians and which actually implies that theta is equal to pi by 3 radians. So, this theta is also pi by 3, this angle is also pi by 3 and this of course, is pi by 3. So, this triangle A D C is an equilateral triangle, it is an equilateral triangle, because all the three angles are equal to pi by 3 radians or 60 degrees. And therefore, the length of this line segment C D will also be equal to the, the other length of the other two sides, which is 1 unit. So, this C D is also of length 1 unit. Further, so what we have now is that the length of C D is 1 unit. Further, because these two triangles A B C and A B D are congruent, the length of these two sides B C and B D. So, this length and this length have to be equal. So, if the whole length C D is 1 unit, then it turns out that this length has to be half a unit, this has to be half a unit. And therefore, now we can say that the cosine of this angle pi by 6, sorry the sine of this angle, so sine of this angle pi by 6 is equal to, so sine of pi by 6 
will be equal to so sin of this angle. So, let us focus on this triangle A B C whose hypotenuse is of length 1 unit and C B is equal to half unit and therefore, sin of pi by 6 will be opposite by hypotenuse which will be half divided by 1 which is equal to half. So, through this simple construction we showed that sin of pi by 6 is equal to half and similarly because in the previous class we had shown that sin square x plus cos square x is 1. So, using that relation what you can show is that cos of pi by 6 will be equal to root 3 by 2. Another question that would come to mind is, is there any relation between sin of x and sin of minus x and similarly between cos of x and cos of minus x. So, we have again drawn a unit circle here with center at O. This is the x axis, this is, this is the x axis, this is the y axis and we have a point P here whose x and y coordinates are E and B respectively and this angle of rotation is x. So, therefore, if I drop a perpendicular from this point P onto the x axis at this point A, then this length O A <coughs> will be equal to A. So, this O A will be equal to A <coughs> and this this length here will be equal to <coughs> B. Now, let us rotate <coughs> since we are interested in this angle minus x then we need to <coughs> to get minus x we need to rotate this <coughs> particular radius in the clockwise direction by the same amount of rotation that we did for this angle x. So, when we rotate it by the same amount this angle is minus x <coughs> and when we rotate starting from here when we rotate in the clockwise direction by the same amount of rotation as we did when going from here to here let us we say that we reach a point q. To find sin of minus x, to find sin of minus x, sin of minus x will therefore be equal to <coughs> suppose that the coordinate of this point Q is C and D. Then sin of minus x, so sin of x is equal to B, that is something we already know. Sin of minus x will be equal to <coughs> So, this is opposite. So, that is the y coordinate of uh, this point Q which is D divided by the length of the hypotenuse which is equal to 1. So, sin of minus s is equal to D. So, essentially we need to see if there is any relation between this D and B. Now, let us see this uh, triangle. So, this point is A if we see these two triangles here. So, one triangle is O A P. So, that is this triangle here and the other triangle is O A Q. Then what we see is that, <coughs> sorry, 
So, between these two triangles, they are congruent because so triangle O A P is is congruent to triangle O A Q. And that the reason being that of course, this side O is common to both of the both of them. <coughs> this side O P of this triangle O A P is equal to the length O Q of the triangle O A Q, because both of them are radius of this unit circle. So, we have two sides which are equal and then this angle x here which is the angle A O P for this triangle is equal to this angle, because both of them are the same in magnitude. So, therefore, these two triangles are congruent. Now, this when we had actually drawn this uh, this point A, we had we had dropped a perpendicular from this point P to the x axis. So, this was 90 degrees. Now, because these two triangles are congruent, this angle should also be equal to this angle which will also be 90 degrees. And therefore, what we see is that this P A Q will actually be a straight line, because this angle is 90 and this is 90. Therefore, the total angle here, this total angle is 180 degrees and therefore, this P A Q is a straight line, which is bisecting, which is basically intersecting with the x axis at 90 degrees. And therefore, it is obvious that the x coordinate of this point Q will also be equal to A. So, C is equal to A. Therefore, that shows that, because that is because of the fact that this whole line is a straight line and it is intersecting with the x axis at 90 degrees. So, essentially this uh, line segment here is parallel to this coordinate axis, the y coordinate axis. So, because these two lines are parallel, the coordinate c here of this particular point will have to be equal to, will be equal to this a here. right? So, therefore, c is equal to a, but what about d? Now, because these two triangles here are congruent, the length of this side of the first triangle will be equal to this, will be equal to the length of this side of triangle O A Q. Therefore, this length, the magnitude of this length will also be equal to b. But since this is in the fourth quadrant, this is on the this is below the uh, uh, x axis. So, therefore, d will be equal to minus b. From where we conclude that now from here and here we therefore conclude that sin of minus x will be equal to minus b, which is equal to minus of sin x which follows from the fact that b is equal to sin x to start with. And therefore, what we see is that sin of minus x is equal to minus of sin x and this is a very fundamental relation. Now, these type of functions where f of minus x is equal to minus of f x have a special name and they are called odd functions, they are called odd functions. If we use the same figure here, then what we can see also is that cos of x, if you look at this triangle O A P then cos of x is equal to this length a divided by 1, which is a. 
and cos of minus x is what? For minus x, we look at this triangle O A Q and cos of minus x will then be equal to the same A divided by hypotenuse which is of length 1. Therefore, this is also equal to A and therefore, cos of x and cos of minus x are always equal and such functions where f of x equal to f of when f of x if there is a function f such that f of x is equal to f of minus x for all x. So, that is not just for one value of x, but for all values of x. So, here also this if it has to be for it to be called as an odd function the function must satisfy this relation not just for one value of x, but for all values of x in its domain. So, we see that cos x is equal to cos of minus x for all values of x belonging to real number the set of real numbers which is the domain of the cos function. So, such functions are said to be even functions they are said to be even functions. So, next we try to delve a little deeper or dig a little deeper into the range of values of sin x and cos x as we move as we increase x from 0 to 2 pi. So, when we are between when this angle x the rotation angle x is between 0 and so, 0 is when you we are here and as you as we move this point on the circle in the anti clockwise direction till we reach this point all we are all we are always in the first quadrant. So, when x is between 0 and pi by 2 radians then the point p is in the first quadrant and since sin x is equal to b the y coordinate of the point and cos x is equal to the x coordinate of the point. Now, in the first quadrant the x coordinate as you can see here is between 0 and 1 and therefore, cos x will be between it will lie in the interval zero to one. So, cos x will be greater than zero and less than equal to one. Whereas sin x, which is the uh, y coordinate of this point, will also lie in the interval zero to one. So, I put a curly bracket here because I have defined the first quadrant to be x less than pi by 2. So, sin x will have to be less than 1 because uh, sin x is equal to 1 only when x equal to pi by 2 and therefore, it will never attain this value 1 and therefore, there is a round bracket here. And similarly, we can fill up the other entries of this table. For example, if as we move along the uh, circle, if we move further from this point in the anti clockwise direction, then we are in the second quadrant. So, that is when the rotation angle is between pi by 2. So, pi by 2 is this much all the way till pi. So, pi is half a rotation. So, in the second quadrant sin x is basically if you see sin x is the y coordinate. right? So, sin x will again lie between it is on the positive side of the uh, it is on the upper side of this uh, horizontal x axis. So, the y coordinate of any point in this second quadrant will always be between 0 and 1. So, this will also lie between, but in this case it will lie between 0 and 1, but for the cos x for the cosine in the second quadrant what happens is that the point is on the other side of the of this uh, y axis. So, what happens is that 
the x coordinate becomes negative and since cos sin of an angle is equal to the x coordinate of the corresponding point on the circle, the value of cos x in the second quadrant will go from. So, when we are here cosine of this pi by 2 is actually 0 and when we reach at this point, this is equal to this much this coordinate of this point is minus 1 comma 0. So, the x coordinate is minus 1. So, cosine of 180 degrees is equal to minus 1. So, in the second quadrant cosine of x will lie between minus 1 and 0 and in a similar manner uh, the other entries could be filled up. So, basically we have to keep moving in the anti clockwise direction starting from here to when we move further then we are in the third quadrant till this point and then from when we move further from this point back to where we started from then we are in the fourth quadrant. So, let us try to plot the graph of the sin function. So, on the x axis we have the angle of rotation x, on the y axis we have the value of sin of the angle of rotation x. So, let us say this is 1 and this is minus 1 and let us say that now I have drawn a little uh, circle here of uh, unit radius with center at this point O and let us say that we start from this point here, start from this point here and try to move in the anti clockwise direction. Now, at this point we know that first of all from the previous slides we know that sin of x of any point will be equal to the y coordinate of this point. Now, at this point when x at this point there is no angle of rotation, there is no rotation therefore, the angle of rotation is 0. So, on the x axis we are here x equal to 0 and since we are at this point here on the circle the y coordinate is 0 and therefore, sin of x equal to 0 will be 0. So, we draw this point as we as we move further in the anti clockwise direction. Let us say we reach halfway between this position and this position which is here. So, we are somewhere there. So, this has to be half of uh, 90 degrees which is pi by 4 or 45 degrees. So, when we reach here the sign of this angle will be equal to the y coordinate of uh, this point which will be equal to 1 by root 2 which is approximately 0 0.707. So, we see here this is pi by 4 and the value of sin pi by 4 is 0 0.707 and so since this is 1 and so half of that will be so this this will be 0 0.5 so let us say something approximately this much sorry sorry this will be 2 by 3 so that is 0 0.66 so this will be something like so this length will be something like 0 0.7 from here to here because one is shown to be three little squares here so sin pi by 4 will be approximately 1 uh, 0 0.7 so therefore when you go from 0 to pi by 4 when you plot this graph of sin x it looks something like this and then when we further go in the anti clockwise direction by another 45 degrees which re we reach this point whose coordinate is whose y coordinate is equal to 1 and this angle of rotation now is pi by 2 therefore, sin pi by 2 is 1 and therefore, we reach this point. So, now we connect the graph like this and then further anti clockwise direction starting from this point and then going in this direction. We are in the second quadrant, but now the 
value of the y coordinate on any point here in the second quadrant has to be less than 1, because we are coming down here. So, sin x will again start decreasing from 1 and till we reach this point here. So, for this point here the total rotation angle is a straight line which is 180 degrees or pi radians and the coordinate of this point here is minus 1 0. So, the y coordinate of this point is 0 and therefore, sine of 180 degrees is 0 and hence in the in the second quadrant if we try to plot this graph it will look something like that. So, so this point here corresponds to this point here on the graph sin of pi is equal to 0 and then we can further move ahead and we just have to for any point here for example, here let us say this point here we just need to look at the total angle of rotation starting from here and then corresponding to that angle of rotation we get this point and we then just need to look at the y coordinate of this point and that y coordinate has to be plotted on the y axis here. So, that is how we complete this graph. So, if you try to do it further at uh, 3 pi by 2 which is at this point sin of 3 pi by 2 will be equal to minus 1. So, you should be somewhere here. So, if you try to connect it you might get a graph something like this and then so, so, so going from pi to 3 pi by 2 is when you are in the third uh, quadrant and then further if you go then you are in the fourth quadrant and your curve will look something like that. So, this is how you plot uh, sin of x cosine of x can be plotted in a similar manner it is just that instead of uh, looking at the y coordinate of these points you have to plot the value of x coordinate of each of these points here on the y axis. So, that is how you get the graph for cosine of x. We are not going to ask to ourselves suppose that you have two angles x and y and you know the values of sin x, sin y, cos x, cos y. So, can you find the value of this angle x minus y? Can you find cosine of x minus y? And then maybe cosine of x plus y or cosine of x plus 2 y, sin of x plus 2 y or sin of twice uh, x. So, this is what we are going to address next. We are going to derive formulas for expressing cosine of difference and sum of angles in terms of cos x sin x cos y sin y and suppose that. So, O is the center of this unit circle and consider this point Q here. Let me use a blue pen also. So, let this angle of rotation be x and then we have another point P. And let us say that the angle of rotation for this point P is y So, the coordinates from the definition of sin and cosine of x and y the coordinate of this point Q will be the x coordinate will be cos of x 
and the y coordinate will be sin of x. For this point P, the x coordinate will be cos of y and the y coordinate will be sin of y. And then of course, this angle here will be equal to x minus y, x minus y. And now, we also draw another point r such that the angle of rotation of for this to get from here to r is equal to. So, this angle in red is also equal to x minus y. So, that is also x minus y. So, now we have and let us say that this point here is equal to a. So, this point a has coordinates 1 comma 0. The coordinates of this point r will be because the angle of rotation for this uh, point r is x minus y in red. So, the coordinates are going to be cos of x minus y is the x coordinate, the y coordinate is sin of x minus y. Let us now focus on two triangles. So, we are also going to so, we will first look at the triangle O P Q. So, let me join P and Q here with this green dotted line. So, one of the triangles is triangle O P Q. The other triangle to be considered is O A R. So, triangle O A R. So, for that we need to join together A and R. Now, if you look at these two triangles, then what we see is that in triangle O P Q, this side O Q of this triangle is equal in length to the side O R of triangle O A R, because both O Q and O R are the radius of this circle of this unit circle. Further, side O P of this triangle O P Q is also of unit length, because that is another radius. So, this O P of this triangle O P Q, this, this O P is also of unit length that is also equal to O A, because of this triangle O A R. So, if you see this triangle O, this is point A, A and then R. So, this O A is also a radius. So, therefore, O P is of triangle O P Q is equal to the side O A of triangle O A R. And further, angle P O Q of this triangle O P Q is equal to angle A O R of the triangle O A R, O A R, because both of these angles are equal to 
x minus y. And therefore, these two triangles are congruent, they are congruent. So, using this fact that they are congruent, since they are congruent, the length of all the sides, the corresponding sides should be equal. And therefore, the length of this side q p, which is shown by the green dotted line of this triangle O p q must be equal to the length of the side a r of the triangle O A R. This is because these two triangles are congruent. Now, we will try to use that this fact now further. Now, this, <coughs> this line uh, this length q p is nothing but the distance between the points q and p, where the point q has coordinates cos x sin x and the point q has coordinates cos y and sin y. I mean writing q p equal to a r is same as writing q p square is equal to. So, if the two lengths are equal their squared lengths are also equal. Now, q p square will be simply equal to cos x minus cos y whole square. So, so this is q p square is equal to cos x minus cos y whole square plus sin x minus sin y whole square. right? So, that is q p square and that has to be equal to a r square. What is a r square? Now, we know the coordinates of the point a and point r the coordinates of point A is 1 0, the coordinates of point R is cos x minus y and sin x minus y. Therefore, the squared equilibrium length of this line segment A R will be equal to cos x minus y minus 1 whole square plus sin x minus y minus 0 the whole square which will be sin square of x minus y. So, these two are equal. So, let us try to further simplify them in the next slide. The first expression cos x minus cos y whole square plus sin x minus sin y whole square equals. So, the first square equals cos square x plus cos square y minus 2 cos x cos y and then plus the second square equals sin square x plus sin square y minus 2 sin x sin y, but then we know that for any angle x sin square x plus cos square x is equal to 1. Therefore, these two get added up and become 1 plus these two also get added up and become 1 minus 2 cos x cos y minus 2 sin x sin y. And this was equal to the, the, so that was the simplification of the first expression this one and that is equal to this particular term, uh, this particular expression which is the second expression. So, let us expand that also. So, we said that this has to be equal to cos x minus y minus 1 whole square plus sin square of x minus y which is equal to cos square 
x minus y plus 1 minus 2 cos x minus y plus sin square of x minus y which is equal to. Now, this cos square x minus y and sin square x minus y will add up to 1. So, this will simplify to 1 plus 1 minus 2 cos x minus y. Now, since since this and these are equal. So, when you equate when we equate them what we end up getting is that cos of x minus y is equal to cos x cos y plus sin x sin y and this is a very fundamental result which we will be using in our uh, other lectures later on. Okay. So, we just now we saw that given any two angles x and y cos of x minus y equals cos x cos y plus sin x sin y. How about cos of x plus y? We can use this formula for cos x minus y to also derive an expression for cos x plus y as follows. We can write this as cos of x minus of minus y and then use this formula. So, this will become using this formula this will become cos x into cos of minus y plus sin x into sin of minus y which is equal to cos x. Now, we had shown that cos is an even function therefore, cos of minus y is equal to cos y. So, we have cos y here, but sin of y is an odd function and therefore, sin of minus y is minus sin y and therefore, we get a minus sign here and it becomes minus sin x sin y. So, with this we finish the second lecture, where we started with more uh, relations between sin and cosine. We showed that the sin function is an odd function, the cosine function is an even function. We also showed how to plot the graphs for sin and cosine. And finally, we also derived an expression here for the for the cosine of the difference and the sum of two angles. In the next class, we will discuss the sign of how to derive uh, basically starting from these equations itself, we will derive the sign of difference and sum of two angles, the sign and cosine of twice and thrice of angles and some other relations.